All right, let's do this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me here at Sellersville Theater. This is Sound Booth Sessions, our weekly live stream show where we feature a concert and a conversation with an artist that we love. I'm very excited. My name is Dan. I'm very excited uh, this evening to have joining me uh, the incredible Ken Yates. Uh, just been a big fan of his for a really long time. He's only been our, on our stage a couple of times, but they have been very memorable and impactful. Uh, Ken is one of those artists. Um, I, there are a few artists whose music I love to play before a show uh, because I enjoy listening to it and because it's 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 I know the crowd is gonna enjoy it as people walk in and and Ken is one of Ken's uh, albums are are among those that when I play it I know I'm gonna have a lot of uh, people coming up to ask me who is this that you're playing and uh, and 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 that that is true pretty much every time I play one of Ken's albums. Um, and uh, it's true not only of patrons, but uh, but also of artists. I've had a few artists at Loadout uh, stop in their tracks and be like, "Whoa, wait a second, who is this?" <laughs> so uh, it is it is uh, absolutely uh, an honor to have him here. Um, before we start, I'll say uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for joining me. Um, we uh, of course you got in here without paying a ticket price. Uh, and uh, and that does not mean that this evening's performance is for free. Uh, that means that this evening's performance is pay as you please. Uh, there are links available over there in the which way over there in the event description and down in the comments section. And I'm going to attempt to uh, bring them up on your screen right now. If you follow that link uh, I just I just put up on your screen, that will take you to a link tree which has a number of options, a uh, number of different ways that you can pay. Whatever you like for this evening's performance. Uh, you can pay uh, Ken directly through his Venmo, and you can uh, contribute to the show uh, on our Venmo or our PayPal. There are many ways to pay, and every way is A-OK. -okay. Uh, please support the arts. Your money this evening goes to Ken, and it goes to support the show. These are great causes. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, and of course, if, if times are tough for you right now, as they are for many people, there are many other ways that you can show your support for the show. Uh, we hope that you will click all of the wonderful uh, emojis that are available to you. Uh, give us lots of thumbs ups and claps. And uh, let's see, um, what else is in there? There's little dancing people and some, f some funny faces and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. Be creative. Uh, and uh, please comment. Comment up a storm. Uh, if I see something that's worth reading, I will read it. If it's, or if, if I see it, I'll read it. Uh, say something juicy. Ask a question. Request something. Uh, you know, just, just go to town in there. Um, the comment section is being moderated by Allison. Let's say hello to her. Uh, thank you very much for that. She is going to try to keep you informed. She'll post links when, when, uh, when they are applicable. Uh, she'll try to keep it clean. She'll try to keep things orderly and tidy down there in the comment section. Uh, let's see, what else do I have to say? Um, nothing. Let's get to the music. Uh, I cannot wait to, to, uh, to, to hear Ken this evening. Uh, Ken is joining us uh, from somewhere way up north of Toronto in Canada. Um, he is at the home of Chris and Monica, so thank you to them for, uh, for hosting this evening's performance. Um, let's see, you last saw Ken here on our stage in uh, 2018, supporting Amy Helm, which was uh, quite a, a, a great show, if I remember correctly. Uh, he is, uh, his most recent album is called Quiet Talkers. It was just released in May. Uh, we're going to hear a bunch of songs from it. So ladies and gentlemen, please pick the emojis that uh, best, best describe your feelings right now. And uh, please click feverishly to join me in welcoming all the way from Canada, the uh, the fantastic. Hold on, I've lost him. Oh my goodness. Ken, let's just pretend that never happened. And why don't <laughs> would would you please just start from the beginning, and we'll pretend like all that was was just a bad dream. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do called, it. <laughs> this song's called "Pretend We're All Right," so I'm just gonna let's play it. Play it like I've never played it before. Let's just pretend uh, we're all right. <laughs> Thank you. 
These days we both were supposed to be sober She drinks like my uncle, but man, she makes me laugh And I hate to see her, try not to be her Holding everything back Seems every day there's some kind of heartbreak Some kind of bad news that makes you want to hide But instead we'll make the bed and we'll pretend we're alright Let's pretend we're all right. See a show. Dance all night. Call some friends. Play along. Let's pretend nothing's wrong. And maybe tomorrow. Take on our sorrow And face all our pain But for today we'll Ignore the rain And we'll pretend we're okay Let's pretend We're okay Dance all night Call some friends Play along Let's pretend Nothing's wrong Let's pretend We're alright If it's just for one night Call some friends Stay out late Let's pretend We're okay Great way to start things off there, Ken. All right. Second try. Second try. We pretended everything was all right, and we got through <laughs> it. Let's go right into another one there. All right. Let's do it. What's this one? This one's called Surviving is Easy. Oh, my goodness. I nominate this for the, uh, the anthem of the, of the pandemic. <laughs> the timing was good for this one. Survive. 
surviving is easy Stuck inside of a screen While everybody else is living the dream But it's the only thing they want you to think Surviving is easy Who gives a damn about a broken heart? Who gives a damn about a couple new scars? But getting by will only get you so far Surviving is easy But living is hard Living is hard Living is hard Rain down on the parade I change a lot of things But I stay the same Take a lot of things to keep me awake Surviving is easy Surviving is easy Surviving Oh, very nice. Ken Yates, Surviving is Easy from your great album, Quiet Talkers. Just came out in May just in time for all of us to listen to nonstop during this craziness. How how are you uh, surviving these days, Ken? How how have you adapted to the, the the current state of things? I mean, it's been it's been all right. I, I guess I can't complain, all things considered. Right, right. Even though uh, you know I don't really have a job other than doing this. Right. Um, but you know, it, it's been okay. I, I've been lucky to have an album to release during right. the pandemic, which is good because. I've been able to, you know, at least give people something new to listen to, which is, uh, which is nice for everybody, including myself. Sure. So, uh, so it's been good keeping busy with that, and you know, mostly just trying to write some more, and I guess make another album because what else is there to do right now? That's, there's, there's no touring. That's good. Yeah, of course. Do Do you find yourself being uh, inspired by all of the time off and sort of the state of the world these days, or, you know? Or is this is this a tricky time for you to like find the the space to write? Yeah, I mean it was it was tricky at the start. It's hard yeah. to say inspired because you know it's it's uh, it's more like I guess like angrily driven to uh, I see. <laughs> to, to do stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean like it was hard to write for the first while. It was just like every, everything was 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 going on and it was such a weird change and yeah and. I felt like I had all this time to write, but it was almost like putting too much pressure on myself. But oh. um, eventually, I settled into like kind of a new routine mm -hmm. of you know being being at home and having more more time to write. But you know, there's only there's only so much time in a day that you can spend writing a song. Uh, yeah, and then you wanna you wanna go play a show for somebody sure. at, at a certain point. So yeah, it's been it's been a weird adjustment, but it's been it's been all right. H how does consider. how does one uh, promote? Uh, a show differently during a, a, a lockdown uh, pandemic quarantine situation is, I mean, you, you can, I guess, still do live shows over the internet, but, uh, yeah. but what other, what other things are different about it? I mean, yeah, that's, that took a big adjustment is, is trying yeah. to, to figure out, you know, it, like a lot of people started doing the live shows like immediately mm -hmm. within the first week of like everyone going on lockdown. And it took me a couple months to actually work up the nerve to do one because it just seems so weird and so uh, like weirdly intrusive, like, you mm -hmm. know, pressing that live button and opening up your entire personal space to to anybody just mm -hmm. is terrifying. Um, but uh, I actually when I, I, I started doing a, a couple and uh, and I really started to like them and and get comfortable with them and. Uh, it's actually pretty cool that, you know, people can just tune in from anywhere and interact with each other. And, you know, I can see all my family members who don't realize that they're you can see what they're saying in the chat. <laughs> and uh, so that's been that's been a fun new thing. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you do you uh, read comments as as you're trying to play and or, or do you try not to like can you can you can you make your brain do both? Like focus on, you know, one of your lovely, like intimate, provo <laughs> you know, thought provoking songs. Yeah, well, I'm definitely forgetting more lyrics than, than uh, I normally would because I am able to follow along to a certain extent, but I do yeah. have to catch myself sometimes forgetting the song. 
But uh, I think it's better to try and keep track of the comments than to not because the thought of like not knowing what's going on in the chat is, is also terrifying to me. So I see. It's nice to pretend that there is an audience there and when you can see what they're, they're saying, it kind of helps envision that they're are people there, right? Yes, yes, of course. Well, I'll tell you, there is a, a, a very uh, lively comment section going on now. Uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people just saying, uh, Chuck said he loved that song. Uh, so many songs wow. on Quiet Talkers speak to this year, even though awesome. it was written pre-COVID. That's right, uh, said John, yeah. Lu John Luther. Uh, Michelle Alexanderson says, yay, this is a song of the year for sure. We have Thanks, Michelle. lots of applause uh, a lot of people rooting us on after our uh, the <laughs> the uh, the tech glitch that shall not be referred to again. Um, <laughs> Thanks for coming back, guys. Yes, thank you for coming back. Um, so, just t t tell me about m uh, making this record. I know you worked with um, with Jim uh, Bryson, a tr tremendous uh, uh, producer, right? And yeah, it, it, yeah. He he, uh, and and the sound is uh, a much more um well a much less acoustic sound for you than uh, a lot more indie rock T tell me what you were going for uh with this record yeah well jim produced my previous record huntsville mm -hmm. and um which is more of a folk record more acoustic yeah. uh kind of driven and um uh i i kind of felt like i held jim back on that record like he wanted to kind of push it into a more uh. contemporary kind of direction and I was kind of very, still very much in this kind of folk acoustic uh, solo world and, and kind of held him back. But with this record, I, I kind of just wanted to let him uh, take the reins and and uh, and and, you know, you know, just do do whatever he feels mm. is right for these songs and the songs themselves. I, I feel like I, my writing has, has progressed a little bit more where it's less uh, kind of less classic -y folk songs and, and mm. a bit more. Uh, I guess, uh, I don't know what you would call them, contemporary sounding, but um, that's kind of the direction. We were all, both on the same page with the direction we wanted to go. So d so were these songs all written with the album in mind, or like, did you know what this album was going to sound like, I guess, b before you started to write? A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, it always kind of takes shape as you're recording it, but mm. I definitely, I, I had a full album in mind as I was writing it. Like, mm. I, I, I do try to kind of... Uh, you know, take a snapshot of, of where I'm at in, in that point in my life, which each with, with each record, but honestly, they kind of do that to themselves anyway, even if you, even if you don't intend to, mm -hmm. um, they always kind of somehow have, have a similar theme, like all the songs have a similar theme. And, uh, and I think it's just because, you know, you're, you're writing from your subconscious and, I see. and it, there's, there's always a thread there. So, so is this? Do do you think of the songs in a chunk? Like, is there a narrative? It's kind of a narrative structure. Are you telling a story with the with the collection of songs? I didn't really intend to, but once we recorded it, I kind of realized that they all kind of have a similar theme, mm -hmm. which is like kind of thoughts from thoughts from a wallflower, or thoughts from the quietest person in the mm -hmm. room, which is why I decided to to call it Quiet Talkers, and because they all kind of have have a similar vibe of 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 an observer observer who's uh you know uh collecting their thoughts and and bottling them up and sharing them later mm. well and it also <laughs> it, it it suits this particular time where we're all kind of viewing the world through our own technologies right we're all kind of removed in that way and yeah totally uh, instead of passively participating all right well listen let, let's hear some more of these great songs and then we'll talk some more what what will you play for us next I'm going to play a song that almost didn't make the record, but uh, but I put it on last minute, and I'm glad I did, because people seem to like it. It's a song called Evangeline. Oh, great. Evangeline Quiet dreamer of the movie screen Hit the town and we'll go cause a scene Evangeline and me Take your time You know things don't happen overnight Life is more than just a dollar sign Enjoy the ride
Life can be a gold mine If you got a good mind Stay inside the right lines But don't keep it too clean Evangeline Well, look at you Cinderella with your missing shoes But you don't need no man to rescue you This ain't the movies So here we go Put on all your fancy party clothes Draw the curtains and we'll start the show The world ain't waiting Life can be a gold mine If you got a good mind Stay inside the right lines But don't Keep it too clean Evangeline And if they say you can't fly You just ask them how high Stay inside the right lines But don't keep it too clean Evangeline Don't be afraid to cause a scene Evangeline Wow. That's a beautiful song there, Ken. Um, Thanks, man. And, um, well, I want to say congratulations to you because uh, that song uh, is actually winning an award tonight. Uh, <laughs> it is, yeah. The, uh, the Folk <laughs> Music Ontario Award, the From the Heart, uh, Songs from the Heart Award. And actually, they, right. they sent me the award here so I could give it to you on air. There it is. Here it there is. It it's is. A, uh, the, the 2020 winner of the Songs from the Heart Award. <laughs> Presented yeah. proudly to Ken Yates. There you go, Ken. <laughs> yeah, um, they asked if I uh, if I wanted it mailed to me or to Sellersville, and I said, yeah, just send it to, to Dan. I received it. I will forward yeah. it to you. Um, well, that's that's really wonderful. Um, and, and do you have a do you have a speech prepared? <laughs> Not really. Actually, I was there was supposed to be like an online award show tonight. And uh, everyone was supposed to have a little uh, little speech prepared, and I was just like, "Well, I'm playing a show, so oh. I might uh, I might try to tune in after." But well, sorry. It, thank you for being here with us, and and I, I hope we make you feel appreciated. Um, Very much so. <laughs> well, Ken, I I'm I'm do me a favor, take me back to your sort of your musical beginnings. Um, what what kind of music was in your house when you were growing up? What were you listening to? Yeah, it was mostly like '70s uh, folk music, Neil Young yeah, and good stuff, and uh, you know uh, James Taylor and all those '70s uh, folk guys. So that's definitely what I was uh, brought up on. And okay, that carried through, uh, you know, right up until I started writing songs. So yeah. Well, I, about that moment when you started writing songs, I read in an interview with you that it was in your third year at Berkeley. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That you wrote your first song. I was a late bloomer. Okay, so what were you in uh, at Berkeley for, if not for songwriting, for three years? Uh, just guitar. Guitar, just, yeah. Just so, guitar. Yeah, so usually your first year at Berkeley, which is a, a music 
college in, in Boston, mm-hmm. um, is, is focused on an, an instrument. And then after a couple of years, then you, you pick a major in a direction you want to go. Okay. And I didn't, didn't have much direction. I was an okay guitar player, but not anything spectacular. And, uh, kind of just took a songwriting course because I thought, well, hey, like I I know I want to play music for a living, but I, I better uh, maybe try to write a song if I want wow. to uh, make that a reality. So I took a couple of couple of classes and uh, and then just kind of fell in love with it and uh, it kind of snowballed from there. And I spent all my time writing songs and uh, initially thought, you know, I would just be a songwriter, try to pitch to, uh, to other artists and stuff. And um, that didn't work out, so I started singing it myself, and here I am, ten years later, eleven years later. Well, what, still okay, doing it. so was it really just like one assignment where they said, "Come, come back in the next class," having written a song, and like it just flipped, switched? Well, I mean, I wrote a lot of or bad switched, songs. Switch yeah. flipped, yeah, yeah. I oh. wrote a, a ton of bad songs, so no, I wasn't. I wasn't like a, 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 a yeah, like an amazing uh, virtuoso songwriter, but. I thought, you know, I thought I would take the class and they would just show you like the basics of songwriting right. and whatever, and I would just, you know, mess around with it at home. But the, the, in the first week, they were like, "Bring in a song next week," and I had never written a song, so, you know, I just I worked my ass off and. All right. Well, tell. <laughs> I'm I'm interested in that week because I've I've never I'm a musician. I pl- I play guitar and bass, but I've I've never written a song. And yeah. and I'm I just want to get in your head in that first week. Like, where did you? start like how, what was the what was the exact assignment and like what how did you approach it in, in that first night home it was it was terrifying it was absolutely terrifying um so i spent like a whole week like every day and all night working and and scrapping a bunch of stuff i didn't know where to start right i, I don't remember what the assignment was specifically i think it was like a, a specific form to a song it was okay. like a, a verse refrain thing instead of you know not a typical verse chorus but a verse refrain mm-hmm. and um I had no idea what I was doing. So I think I wrote a song uh, about my girlfriend at the time, which was really bad. I think it was called Flying Bicycle. Flying and, uh, Bicycle. Yeah, it was, it was really bad. And, you, so uh, you're telling me you don't remember it? To play, I don't, to play I, it right now? I could you not know? play it right now, oh, but boo. I remember playing it for my girlfriend, and I could just tell that she was not super <laughs> psyched about it. And then from from then on, I stopped writing about her, and I just oh, started no. making stuff up because I was like, "This is this. She's clearly not into these uh, oh. these songs." And you know, for a year they were bad, and then and then I, I started writing stuff that was was half decent. And I mean, that's the beauty of those classes is it's kind of a safe space to yeah. To even though it's terrifying, but you know, once you write something good, at least uh, you know. The people kind of make you aware that sure. you're on to something. So that was kind of big for me, just knowing you know, knowing that I actually could, you know, was half decent at this. So what, what were some of the, the, the tips or the advice that, that stuck, stuck with you as like particularly, um, helpful? Um, I mean, a lot of it was like kind of, um, looking at popular songs and assessing like what makes them great, you know, Mm -hmm. like what makes a Beatles song great and like kind of just figuring out what I like about, the music I listen to and like, why do I like it? And, and what, what technically in the song, it makes it good. Mm -hmm. And that kind of gave me the tools to, to, Hmm. uh, to figure out, you know, like song structure and form. And, and, uh, if something isn't working, like what's, what's maybe a trick to try and fix it, you know? So it's just having that a little bit of knowledge, uh, to, to help kind of push the songwriting forward. I mean, I, and I will say like, it can't all be, technique based like there needs to be some actual you know uh like i guess uh like um something deeper behind it right like you can't you can't just write a technically good song and there has to be some emotion behind it but uh, yeah so so Uh, is that to say i mean do you do you believe that can anyone be a good songwriter or is there uh a sort of an un is there an unteachable part of it I think there's an unteachable part of unteachable part of it. Yeah. I wouldn't have always said that, but there is a there is a I don't know what you call it, like a, a yeah. an essence to it that, yeah. that like I like I said, you know, I've heard I've heard people write songs that are on paper technically they are songs, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make them good, right? And, and there's technically that, there's, they're songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a there's an added element behind. Right. You know, there, there has to be I think a, a, some natural ability there, especially you know lyrically too. That's that's a major right. one. So. 
Well, and 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 you certainly have a knack for um, uh, uh, finding the, the 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 words to just say the right thing. I I, I really admire uh, your uh, what do you call that words wordsmithing? Wor- uh, just sure, yeah, wordsmanship. Yeah, wordsmanship. Um, wordsmanship. That's a good wordsmanship. One. All right. <laughs> well, listen. Uh, can can we hear a, a a couple more songs and and, and we'll yeah. chat some more? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. All what? right. Song's called uh, "Keep Your Head Down." This is uh, off a. Of my last record, Huntsville. Oh, good one. I ain't seen a hotel room I don't like There ain't nothing but dark in this night And these strangers all say this is where I should stay There ain't nothing but dark in this night These wheels, they don't turn by themselves This old highway's one wrong turn from hell And the man at the border's looking over my shoulder This highway's one wrong turn from hell Don't pick your head up, keep it down Don't pick your head up, keep it down When that night's got you running, dig your heels in the ground Don't pick your head up, keep it down Keep it down Well I'll say what you want me to say And I'll swallow my pride if it pays And I'll tell you a lie just to get some sleep tonight Yes I'll swallow my pride if it pays Take whatever you want and call it art This bloody mess on my sleeve is my heart And I wish I had the hands of a hard-working man This mess on my sleeve is my heart Don't pick your head up, keep it down Don't pick your head up, keep it down When that night's got you running, dig your heels in the ground Don't pick your head up, keep it down There's a man on the side of the road His skin is as thick as it is old He says hell is a fire that keeps burning inside Takes a lifetime to carve out that stone Don't pick your head up, keep it down Don't pick your head up, keep it down When that night's got you running with no light to be found When those wheels keep on turning around and around when that night's got you running to your heels in the ground Don't pick your head up, keep it down Keep it down, keep it down Just keep it down Gorgeous. Thank you. Let me share All some right. of these, uh, these comments with you as you, as you switch instruments right. there. Yeah. T- uh, tell us about that guitar you were just playing, actually. Was that... That looked like a nice Gibson. What, yeah, a Gibson. It's a, what, uh, what, what was it's it? A, it's a it's a it's a J thirty five, and oh. um, it was uh, it was pre used by an uh, artist named Passenger, who um, oh who yeah I was lucky enough to tour oh, with Passenger last year, and uh, he likes to he likes to keep a bunch of these Gibsons in rotation, and huh. uh, and at the end of the tour he was kind of done with this one, and and he gave it to me, you know, and. You know, it's it's nicely broken yeah. in by him. It's, oh, uh, beautiful! I don't I don't play that hard, so people always look at the guitar and they're like, "There's a bunch it's of scratches and stuff in it," because he wails on it. And uh, but I kind of love that it's pre-used, and uh, and that was very very kind of him to uh, to to as a parting gift. I thought it was a joke. Oh. I thought he was playing a prank on me at the end of the tour. You know how like sometimes. You know, the last show, it's people play a prank. Wow. And uh, I was like, yeah, very funny, man. Ha ha. And he was like, no, I'm serious. Just take it. Wow. I was like, really? That's <laughs> quite, a, quite, a, quite a gift. Yeah. Um, which, ha- have, you, have you written any songs on that guitar? Did that, right? A lot, let, yeah. Let me say that. Yeah. Which, which songs did fell out of that guitar? Like, um, 
not I mean, I don't think actually some of them some of the some of the newer ones off of Quiet Talkers, some that I wrote kind of right before we went in the studio. Actually, like most of the new stuff has been written on this guitar because I've I've mostly played a Martin uh, most of most of my life. I've always loved Martins. Um, they're they're right up the and, road. Uh, Martin guitars. Yeah, exactly. A couple yeah, miles in Nazareth. Yeah. yeah, and uh, but it was just nice to to have have something new for a change. I've played the same Martin for like eleven years. And uh, so it was just like nice to have something new around, and I just found myself picking this one up uh, more often. And uh, is there something? Is there a sound it likes to make like different than your Martin? Is like yeah, it's it's a little fuller, like it, especially acoustic. Like I, it, when if I play a live show, I kind of still prefer the Martin mm-hmm. um, because it, this the Gibson's kind of meant more for for people who play a little harder, I think. Okay. Uh, but just lying around the house, it's just got such a nice full sound yeah. that I just found myself just continually picking it up, and and now it's kind of the one I when I play more than than the other one. So I yeah. see. Thanks, and, passenger. And, and and now you've grabbed a telly. <laughs> yes, another new addition. So yeah, I'm enjoying this as well. Dylan goes electric. Yep. <laughs> All the fans are running away. That's right. There's, they're rioting in the comment section. Um, oh, I, I was going to share some of these comments with you. Uh, people are saying congratulations for your uh, award. Thank uh, you. John Luther says, well-deserved. Kim Terramoto, congrats, Ken. Thank you, Kim. Michelle Alexanderson says she's drinking Top Shelf Rye. That right sounds on. nice. Do, did right. you bring some for the rest of the class, Michelle? That's... Yeah, come on, Michelle. I got some here, too. So. Oh. Um, cheers. 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 I have some uh, some some seltzer water that I got. Nice. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michelle Alexanderson also says you have to have the passion to write songs, and Ken certainly has the passion. Indeed. Thank you, Thank you for the compliment, Victoria. She says she likes the interview. Thank you. Uh, the guitar was awesome sounding. Yes, it was. Thanks. And Chuck is a new fan. He's the first time he's ever heard that song, and he loves it. All right. Thanks, okay. Chuck. So what are you going to do on the electric? Uh, I'm going to play another uh, song off the new record. Uh, this song's called Two Wrongs. It was one of the first songs I wrote for, for the new record. Mm. And uh, yeah, it goes like this. Last night, I took you for a ride Out by the old starlight Where I spend most of my time Trying to be something You had just finished the shift You were so tired of it Told me you wanted to quit If it were only that easy And I'm too shaky to lean on Too tired to be strong Too old to start again Too young to believe it you are too proud to lose too angry to feel blue too dark to see the light two wrongs make us right two wrongs make us right Best thing I'll ever do is hold on tight to you when everything else is unglued. We'll stick together. When my life went off the tracks, I had a panic attack. Well, you still had my back. Your loving was easy, and I'm too shaky to lean on, too tired to be strong. Old start again Too young to believe it And you are too proud to lose Too angry to feel blue Too dark to see the light Two wrongs make us right Two wrongs make us right
shaky to lean on Too tired to be strong Too old to start again Too young to believe it in you You're too proud to lose Too angry to feel blue Too dark to see the light Too long to make us rage How's that electric sound? Sound okay? It Loud. sounds good. All right. It, it's it's vibey. All right. The vibe vibes. Is what we're going for. Good good vibes all around. <laughs> um, yeah, this is all sounding so good. These uh, these songs are great, and this is like a really nice. It's a nice night for this. You know, it's just it's just right. It's just right. Totally. You, I, I'm writing down, uh, and I have been as as I've been listening to music. You have so many. Um, just beautiful couplets, such beautiful phrasing. Um, I, I was telling my wife, you're like a lyrical assassin. You just like, <laughs> mm, you just like so precisely get uh, 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 the words paired with the the idea. And um, oh, thanks, man. I'm going to use that lyrical assassin. A lyrical I've assassin. I've never heard that before. Oh well, it it just it. It's just it's you're just so right on the money and so many of it is I mean that that too shaky to lean on to um, oh and when everything comes unglued you're what what I stick to I, I mean we'll stick together yeah. we'll stick together um, I I have to wonder do when when you're writing do you, most most of the time I'm sure it's different every time but do do you find um, like a little turn of phrase like that do you find the 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 small phrase and expand it or do you start with the big idea that you're trying to articulate and and work work down to those and find those moments yeah that's actually a really good question um i would most of it actually starts from having like one line uh, like that uh like a couplet that i just really like and i don't know what it means or what kind wow. of song i'm gonna write but uh mm. most of the time if you're lucky when you like i usually start writing a song on guitar and, and have a melody first. And then I kind of just continually keep playing and singing that melody until, you know, something pops in there. Like occasionally I will have something I want to write about that I will specifically sit down and try and write, but, but that, that's pretty rare. So most of the hmm. time it's just having a line and, uh, and, uh, building around that one huh. line which and then i kind of just do it line by line like it, it wow. takes me forever to write lyrics like i, I take right? weeks and weeks and, and months sometimes and usually it's just like kind of filling in filling in the blanks and adding a line here adding a line there and um i'm i'm a little obsessive about it i do a lot of rewriting so well i mean it <laughs> it it it, it it's apparent that that there's a lot of intention put put into the the crafting of it like it certainly seems um the 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 effort is apparent you know oh thanks <laughs> um but okay so it was so is there is there a line that you thought meant one thing but but by the time you got to the end of the song it had it surprised you and what it wound up meaning um yeah i would say um the title track off quiet talkers um the uh, the line i came up with was just head head and heart head and heart ain't on the same page they're both quiet talkers and I didn't really know what that meant, and I didn't really know where the song was going um, until I kind of finished it, and I went like, "Oh, this all kind of kind of checks out into into something more meaning, meaningful than I thought it was," um, which is always cool when that happens because it doesn't always happen. But uh, sometimes you obsess about a line and you want to squeeze it into a song, and it just doesn't fit, and that's uh -huh. that's the most frustrating part, right? Is when the song right. wants to be something else, but you're stuck on on a few lines. Yeah. How do you um, how do you account for that? Like like coming up with with something, like do you think that you know what it means? You just haven't 
realized it yet? Like, like, does your subconscious know what that line meant and then you discover it? Or are you, or is it just words until then you write a song around it to, to prop it up? Yeah, it's, it's definitely a subconscious thing. And sometimes it's terrifying uh, how much wow. of how, when I finish a song, I think like this has nothing to do with me. Yeah. And then I take a step back and I go, oh, oh that's, crap. Yes, that's it does. <laughs> freaky. And I also have the luxury, and this is what I would say to most people, most songwriters, like my biggest luxury is that I have a person that I send songs to, who is Brian Dunn, who you've had on the show, and oh. uh, another fantastic songwriter. We like and Brian Dunn. Big fans. Yeah, I, I would be, I would say a lot of these songs would not have made the record if I hadn't sent them to Brian, because most oh. of the time, most of the time I... Th- I think I've written something terrible and I, I always send it to him regardless just because a lot of times he says like, no man, this, this song's great. And, wow. and he tells me what it means sometimes oh, wow. where I go like, I'm not even <laughs> sure. Like sometimes you're just so caught up in it that you just need another person to say like to, to, to have a, a bigger picture, you know? And, uh, so I'm, I'm lucky that I have oh. somebody like that. And I think every songwriter should, should have somebody who can be like brutally honest with them. Cause a lot of times I think I've written something phenomenal and, and he's like, eh, put this in the, put this in the B pile. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's so interesting. Is, um, is there anything that's kind of in the works that you could kind of pull, pull back the curtain and, and play for us? Something, something, very, you yeah. know, new or, or, you know, in development? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can play, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll switch to electric. Oh, um, sorry to derail you here. No, 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 it's all good. And then, so now what, what, what song is this and kind of where is it in its life cycle? cycle? So this was just recently rewritten. Okay. I've rewritten it, I think, three times. I told you, I'm, I'm a little obsessive. And, uh, uh, I wrote this before, sorry, one sec here, um, I wrote this before the pandemic happened, about the end of the world, and uh, here we are. So it's taken taken new life since then. The first draft was written before then, and then I've uh, tweaked it a million times since then. So. Which what what style of world ending? Like what what was it that was causing the world to end in, in well, the first draft? Yeah, I took a I took a trip to the West Coast to to Oregon and uh, uh, visited some friends on the Oregon coast and. Uh, one of my friends had recently moved there from Tennessee, and she was terrified of the big one, which I guess is a uh, is a fault line oh. off the coast of Oregon that oh, wow. that, that potentially will be, cause a giant earthquake at some point. And uh, she the, she was kind of terrified of it, and would would make mental notes of like where the you know tsunami evacuation routes and stuff were, and um, that that sort of inspired the song. It's, the song's called "The Big One." And, oh my goodness! Uh, and yeah. and where is this in its life? Like, how is this? Is this? <clears throat> did this get the Brian Dunn seal of approval? <laughs> Actually, it. I don't know yet. Oh, uh oh. I have sent him. I've sent him the finished, the fin, the rewritten version, the okay. third written version, and I have. I have yet to hear back. I sent it to him yesterday. Sent him a folder of a bunch of rewrites. So, uh, we shall see. Oh boy. <laughs> so this could suck, guys. Oh no. Could suck. Brace yourselves. It's the <laughs> it's the big one. Yeah. <laughs>
pills aren't working, they just clutter your mind. And we'll all get sober for a matter of time. I sing all these songs about how I feel, never really talking to anyone real. But one thing I know, when it's all said and done, I'll be holding your hand when the big one comes. I'll be holding your hand So we'll call our parents Every Sunday night And we'll check the weather And tell them we're fine And spend our money Things that won't help And we'll all get tattoos When we're bored of ourselves Don't worry baby If it's heaven or hell We'll be there together For better or for well When the sky is falling I won't turn and run I'll be holding your hand When the big one comes When the big one big one comes, I'll be holding you. The people like it. The people like <laughs> right. it. The Good comment section has spoken. All right. You don't Thank even you need to, to run it by Brian. The comment <laughs> section has declared it. Michelle, right. Michelle is, is excited that there's a new song. She's she's in Seattle actually. Michelle Alexanderson is in Seattle waiting for the big one. Oh, there you go. Andy Dinsmore <laughs> says so far so good right at the beginning of the song. Awesome. Uh, uh thanks guys. Marie Lecurf says these lyrics are incredible. This thanks, is beautiful. Love it. I loved that really. Yes, sounds like a keeper. Beautiful. Oh, the comments are just pouring in. <laughs> Caleb Lehman, yes. Oh, 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 also they're rooting on your big sips. There's been a, a Oh. Everybody's commenting on how big your sips are oh, that you're yeah. taking of yeah. your drink. We're uh, getting we're getting low here, so I might need a refill soon. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Victoria, guys. <laughs> Victoria Capazzoli, bored of yourself. Great line. Yes, get tattoos when you're bored of yourself. That was a good one. Uh, so can you? So wait. So you said that that was uh, recently edited. What what's something that that was new about that? And what what changed? Why? What did you change it from? Um, I mean, I rewrote. Uh, I, most of the verses I rewrote. Oh. I, I think the f- the first verse stayed the way it was, which was kind of like you know the the world is slowly dying. Right. <laughs> it, right. it all comes from a very dark place, apparently. But uh, then the second two verses uh, kind of uh, adapted to to how I mean how the world started actually changing, um, and I you know just like I said, I just. If I'm not, if I don't feel amazing about a line, I'll just continue continue to write it and write it until I, until I feel good about it. Yeah. Hmm. It, it was I, the 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 final scene of Fight Club was playing in my head when like Brad Pitt and Hel- or no Ed Norton and Helena Bonham Carter are standing and like the buildings are just crashing all around him. Had, yeah. Have you seen that? Do you know exactly. what the picture is? Yeah, I was th- actually thinking when I wrote that song, I was thinking of that movie Deep Impact. Where yeah. they're like standing on a beach and there's a giant tidal wave about to hit them, and that's kind of what I was yeah. envisioning. But, oh, there's yeah. some there's there's also a movie that's specifically I think about a about an earthquake that causes a tidal wave and in yeah. some like Nordic town this and bar a, service. Wow, what are you drinking Amazing, over there? Right? What what was I, it? You I've said got I got a little scotch here. A little scotch. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds nice. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let me just remind everybody in the crowd since since you are since you are enjoying this this show so much. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for weighing in on that last song. Appreciate uh, the support. Um, of course, uh, if you've been following along the comics, you, you comments you have seen that we are are posting the links for how you can contribute to uh, support the arts and specifically support Ken Yates and support this show, Sound Boost Sessions. Uh, please follow those links uh, to the link tree. I will try to share that right now if Facebook decides to work. 
Um, if, if Facebook decided to work, uh, uh, something just popped up on your screen that said support Ken Yates and Sound Boost Sessions. If you click into that, there's a whole bunch of buttons, all the different ways that you can uh, uh, send money to support the show. Uh, and of course, we would appreciate you being as generous as you can. Support the arts. Um, you know, this is a tough time for everybody, uh, uh, but, but our, our artists need our support. Um, so thank you in advance. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, Ken. Yeah. Uh, would you let? Oh, you mentioned Quiet Talkers just a moment ago. Um, yeah. Would you uh, Would you mind playing it for us? Let's do it. Here's the title track. Great. <laughs> I can tell you're feeling all right Twirling your hair under the street light Ballerina dancing This town, everybody's on their way down Everybody's trying to break ground Me, I'm treading water I can't get out of my own way Head and heart ain't on the same page They're both quiet talkers Well, it's the middle of the night But you're easy to talk to when you're wasted It's the middle of the night But you're easy to talk to when you're wasted it's the middle of the night, but you're easy to talk to when you're roaming around in the West End. Cigarette ash inside a tall can, heart like an elevator. I asked you why you cover up your tattoos. You said on. I can't argue with that It's the middle of the night But you're easy to talk to when you're wasted It's the middle of the night But you're easy to talk to when you're wasted It's the middle of the night But you're easy to talk to when you're slurring I'm not looking for love, just looking for you to say it's alright. I don't wanna be alone tonight. Don't let me be alone tonight. You can keep on talking all quiet as long as you like. Quiet Talkers, off the new album, Quiet Talkers. Folks, that's what it looks like. It's on your screen right now. The man himself. <laughs> um, Ken, while you're switching uh, guitars there, uh, we, we do a thing on this show to show appreciation to uh, the teachers and mentors who have, who have uh, uh, greatly impacted our our artists, we call it the teacher feature. Is there somebody you could shout out right now who was a who was a, a an influential teacher or mentor to you um, w yeah. w that that impacted your your musical creation? 
Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, a teacher at Berkeley. Her name was Scarlet Keys, and uh, she was kind of the the one who uh, I guess encouraged me to to uh, to keep at it with songwriting and actually think about a career in it and actually think wow. about performing myself. And it was just she had a, she created a very comfortable environment for somebody like me who was not very comfortable with his songwriting skills mm. or performance skills at that point. Um, and so, uh, like she, she just really gave me a lot of confidence, uh, going off to the, to the real world and trying to actually make a career of this. So shout out to Scarlett. Yeah. Thank you, Scarlett. Oh my goodness. I, I, I see what's next. And, and this, this is, I think one of my favorites from, from, uh, from the record. Can you tell us about this, this next song? Yeah. Uh, as I don't really know how to... I don't really know how to play it yet. This is a... I never thought I'd have a song like this, which is like kind of a... kind of an up-tempo, turn up in your car, roll the windows down kind of song, even though it's like pretty dark. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I don't... I have not played it... Uh, live anywhere yet so it's I, I don't really know how to play it yet because it's very uh full band fully produced but uh what, what does that mean though you don't know how to play it like it, it, i j- i haven't really figured out the sweet spot where like uh, as a solo performance i don't really know oh like where, the how where to, to go with it yet yeah. how to like approximate the intensity of the record yeah or... like i feel like i play it differently every single time and i'm never really happy with it so every every one of these online shows i'm just finding a new way to play it so um, well, that's yeah. cool. So it's it's an exclusive, an exclusive <laughs> yeah. performance. It'll never sound like this ever again. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I get it right. But right. Yeah. This could be the night. That's right. This could be the one. Are you going into a different tuning there, or are you just just um, tuning with a no, ca- just, capo? Just tuning with a capo, which it. is uh, which is a bitch. Yep. Uh, yeah. The song's called "When We Came Home." Sunset, no sunrise had come up yet. No people walking around here, only ghosts with the same names. When we came home, that silver lining was barely even shining. No finish line was drawn to tell us we had reached the end. When we came home, the house that made us now is only there to cage us. Along with those who stayed behind inside the walls and named us And I swore I'd never go back again I swore I'd never go back again When we came home that empty nest was like a weight upon that chest All the beds were made and walls were painted darker than the rest When we came home that dirty river It kept on flowing thicker With the dust of long gone restaurants And empty bottles of liquor When we came home my sister Lisa Took a pill out in Ibiza Now she says she's found God Getting phone calls now from Jesus And I swore I'd never go back again I swore I'd never go back again And 
endless pages keep on turning now You don't decide the end And I swore I'd never go back again I swore I'd never go back again Yeah, yeah that... Uh, some of the lines in that song are are really uh like right on the money that um uh, thanks man uh the, the empty nest they wore the empty nest around their like a like a weight upon their chest wow yeah there's some dark stuff in that one yeah that's that's heavy <laughs> the uh, turning the page the age is just oh my gosh that's really <laughs> um is is that song autobiographical or or was that a more fictitious uh Creation. A little, a little bit of both, which I would say for most of the songs on the new sure. album are a little bit of both. Like they kind of start autobiographical and they take on a, a, a mm. whole life of their own, kind of. So yeah, you know, there's yeah. there's sprinkles of of both. <laughs> I I imagine that's that's you coming home from college and like living ba- with your parents again afterward and sort of living, discovering all of those complicated feelings there. But well, yeah, it's it's sort of about like kind of returning to to like a place where you grew up with the eyes of an adult and kind of yeah. like viewing it viewing it through different eyes after <sighs> like going off into the world. But also like um, kind of uh, seeing a few a few people that I'm relatively close to struggling with with retiring. Like mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of people think like you know there's a there's a the finish line like a light at the end of the tunnel and. Then they realize oh, life kind of goes on. So it was kind of, kind of those two things in mind um, mm-hmm. that that inspired the song. Great, <laughs> heavy very, shit. Very well done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> heavy shit. Exactly. And uh, and and we're, get, we're get, you're getting props for the arrangement, Marie Lecurf. I love the way you played Thanks, it. Thanks, Marie. Thanks for staying up, Marie. I think she's in Europe. <laughs> Is that right? Where are you, Marie? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, Chuck says, "Wow, John Luther, cool arrangement." Chuck's loving the lyrics. Chris Doust uh, loved the chords in that song. Yes, they sounded very cool. It's very, it's very uh, hypnotic the way you were playing it. Um, Thank you. Caleb felt that going softer in the last stanza was perfect. Right on. Very good. All right. Keep uh, it going. Yeah. Keep the vibes coming. Yeah, I guess we got we got a couple more here. I think. Sure. Yeah. What's what's uh, what's up next? Uh, I think I'm going to do uh, a song, uh, the title track off of my last record. The song's called Huntsville. Ooh, here we go. There's Huntsville. There's a street like that burns in your sleep. Through your broken window blinds When you said you never felt love for me Well I knew that was a lie Cause I've seen all of your troubles and trials Through those tears in your eyes And if you need to leave here tonight Well honey, I don't mind Somewhere out where the river run winds There's a sky turning blue How about you, you go your way now go your way too Well we could laugh at them Hollywood kind and find something new We could drive up to Huntsville tonight Buy something used Red sky on the sailor's good side 
Red wine on your shoes And when you, you go your way now Well I'll go your way too And if the mornings don't shine how you like Find the night to dream into And when you, you go your way now Well I'll go your way too Another beautiful song there, Ken. <laughs> Thanks, wow. man. Very nice. I'm all out of happy ones now, so. <laughs> okay, no, that none was None of it. them are really happy, but. Well. Yeah, you know. The, the internet collectively just reached over and hugged their loved one. <laughs> that was um, beautiful. Uh, clapping mm-hmm. in, in the comments. Uh, guitars sounded great. The, uh, Kathy feels that the sound was good tonight. Awesome. It Thanks, held Kathy. out. We're, we're the 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 internet is holding together for us. Uh, there, the, Ken is is in front of a not, some nice windows, and there was a, a lightning storm earlier uh, in the evening, and we were concerned that we might lose power, and the whole thing would get shut down. But the universe the universe yep. cooperated. Um, <laughs> Ken, uh, we are we are coming up on your last song here, and and before you go. Um, I, I want to do a quick uh, lightning round, lightning question round All right, with you. Let's just do it. Uh, you know, inspired by inside the actors' studio. I don't know if you ever watched that, but yeah, sort let's of. Do a, it. <clears throat> um, Ken, what sound do you love? What sound or noise do you love? Mm. Um, oh, I love the sound of like an old upright piano. Mm. Like an out of yeah. tune. Yeah, like kind of phasey. Just like super old. Yeah, kind of out of tune. Yeah. If you could play any instrument at a professional level, what would you choose? Oh, uh, ooh, probably piano. Yeah. Uh, who Who is your dream collaboration? Ooh, good question. Maybe Maybe Sufjan Stevens. Well, I feel like Dude. it wouldn't be cool enough for him, but I was still. getting some Sufjan vibes on this last record. Oh, For thanks. sure, I have so, that's so cool that you said that. Um, okay, when you do uh, karaoke, what's your go-to song? Uh, Benny and the Jets. Good one. <laughs> do you? I mean, do you want to do it right now? Is that one that <laughs> no, you have you ever no, covered? I don't. It? I don't. It's a good karaoke song because I can't hit the notes. Uh, so yeah, I feel like you don't <laughs> want to be good at karaoke, right? Like you don't want to like nail it. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be the professional <laughs> getting up there no. and doing doing your own song at, at right. the karaoke. Um, okay, uh, which food item, if you walk into the green room on a show and this and this food item is in the green room, you know it's it's going to be a good it's going to be a good show. What's that food item? <laughs> I don't get a lot of good fo- food items in green rooms, but <laughs> uh, probably like if there's a good veggie plate with hummus, you're like. You know that they take it seriously. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. Do you have a hospitality rider that you send out? I don't know. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm at that level where I can. I oh. mean, I could, but I'll take. I'll take with the venue. You take take what you can get. All right. I know Sellersville gives some nice cookies, which I always we always do appreciate. Give yeah. good. T- t- when we're not in the middle of a of a pandemic, we give yeah. delicious cookies. We should mail mail some out to the <laughs> to the ex. That would be really good. Um, okay. And and I guess finally, what's your uh, uh, favorite curse word. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I probably use fuck the most. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 
right. I feel like that one throws the weight behind what you want to sure. curse about, right? So, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a good Sorry, one. Sorry, that's kind of a boring answer, but uh, you know, it's good. It's versatile. You know, you can yeah. you can use it in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, listen, uh, I want to thank you very much for for doing this, Ken. This has been a, a an absolute pleasure. Yeah, likewise. The the questions have been awesome here. Oh, you've, thank you've you. Some really really good stuff. Thanks, man. Well, you know, it's just it's nice to chat with you. I, I you know you've been here a few times, uh, and I don't know that we've ever had a chance to just sit and talk for a while. So this this has been yeah. You know, there I, there are people here watching, but for 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 us, this is a, a rather intimate experience of just being yeah. on either <laughs> side of a screen here. <laughs> it is, yeah. So uh, you know, I'm just trying to give you some good vibes, and thank you for thank you for your for your music. I, really enjoyed it oh i appreciate it man i appreciate you having me on this and sure. having me back to the theater all the time and, yes and that's one of one of my favorite spots to play so thank you yeah and we'll be looking for opportunities to bring you back so right on hopefully oh. that's soon so how are you gonna how are you gonna put us to bed tonight what are you gonna take us home well it's definitely not an up-tempo song but okay. it's uh relatively positive i guess it's good sort of um, it's a song, uh, one of my favorite songs I've ever written. It's, uh, ah. it's called, uh, but it's nobody else's favorite song, but it's, it's mine. So that's, that always seems to be how it works. What, what about it rings? What, why is it your favorite? You know what? I don't even know. I, I couldn't tell you. I just, uh, it's always kind of been a special one for me. Uh, I think just, I, I really like the, the refrain of this song and, and, uh, it, I think it's my only song in, in six, eight times. So, ah. um, so I don't know, just got a different vibe. I just uh, I just like it. Can't can't tell you why. But all right, it's called the uh, High on You Under the Moon. Satellites labor through the sky Pretending they're stars of burning light And we are both drunk on top shelf right That we swore we'd save The night is for fools who have grown tired of mornings and afternoon desires And this is the first I've seen you smile Since we left your room The world is on fire and I'm high Your mother was sick and getting older And my heart was tired and getting colder And the TV and radio don't have nothing good to say Well you burn the candle at both ends and I burn the bridges with my friends And you are my only light That things might get better soon The world is on fire and I'm high
signs or warnings Maybe the sun will rise And it might bring something new The world is on fire and I'm high on you under the moon The world is on fire and I'm high on you under the moon The world is on fire Thank you so much, Ken Yates. Thanks for having me, Dan. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Friends at home, that is our show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for for hanging out. Thank you for bearing with us through the, you know, that thing that happened at the very beginning of the show. I uh, hope, hope you made the transition with us and, and, and found us all right. Uh, thank you for your comments and your energy uh, in the comments section. Um, that, was, that was great. And, uh, of course, please... On your way out tonight, please make sure that you visit uh, the links that have been posted in the comments section. Um, I will go ahead and share it again right now. It should pop up on your screen. Uh, is a link tree, and that's all the different ways that you can support uh, Ken Yates and Sound Boost Sessions. Uh, if you are new to Sound Boost Sessions, thank you for being here. My name is Dan. This is the Sellersville Theater. This is a show that we do uh, pretty much every week, every Friday and Saturday, although that's going to be changing in November, so stay tuned for that. Um, and uh, it's a concert and a conversation with one of our favorite acts. We've got some great shows coming up uh, tomorrow night. We finally are going to have our conversation with Danny Burns. Uh, we've tried three times now. Third time is the charm. We're doing it tomorrow tomorrow night uh and then next week it's like the funkiest weekend you can possibly imagine we got the groove merchants on friday and arthur thomas and the funkatorium both bands playing live on stage i believe both bands have horn sections uh it's gonna be great uh we're gonna have a lot of fun so uh make sure you come on back next week friday and saturday at eight uh, I want to say thank you to Allison moderating the comments section. I want to say thank you to Chris and Monica for hosting Ken in their lovely home. Uh, and uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, friends, good news. Uh, Sellersville Theater is now allowed to have uh, to sell tickets at, at a limited capacity. So there's a number of shows for sale on our website where you can actually come on out and uh, and see a show live here in our theater. So visit us at st94.com to see which shows those are. Uh, and uh, and visit us on YouTube to see a nice little safety video where we uh, where we show you all the w all the changes we've made and all the things that we've installed uh, trying to keep you and us and our artists safe. Uh, while you're on YouTube, you can see the whole archive of Soundboost Session episodes. We're over 30 now. I think this was episode 35 that we've done uh, in, in the last few months. And all the episodes uh, that have happened are up there in a higher resolution uh, than they were originally broadcast on Facebook. So head on over to YouTube. In a couple of days, you can come and, and rewatch uh, uh, Ken's episode because uh, I know you're going to want to see it again and relive these magical moments. So thank you for being here, and good night. I hope we see you next week. I mean tomorrow. I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Ken. That was uh, all right, man. Yeah, that, that, was, really fun. <laughs> that was a blast. You were you were you were a trooper there at the end. I went a little longer than I expected to. Oh no, it's all good, man. <laughs> just, no, the questions just, were awesome. That was oh, actually really nice. You. It was thank refreshing you. to actually have like good interesting stuff to fill the oh. space. Well that's that's yeah. very kind of you to say and thank you. I appreciated your answers and and your thoughtfulness.